the Lost Cause Ranch, and today we are back on the LS3 Swap Defender, and we are finally gonna get back to playing with the LS3 part of the LS Swap Defender. For those of you seeing this guy for the first time, this is a Land Rover Defender 90 that originally came with a 2.5 liter turbo diesel engine. <laughs> And this 430 horsepower GM Performance V8 is quite different than that 2.5 liter diesel. A while back, we went ahead and sorted out our front drive system. And on the passenger side here with the alternator and AC compressor, we were able to utilize some ICT brackets for a sand in compressor and an F body alternator. But that left us with the power steering dilemma. The off the shelf options would either be down below, which obviously with our steering gear in place would not work. So we went ahead and designed our own brackets to use a 3.9 liter Impala power steering pump that has the correct offset for our shallow front crank pulley, keeping everything nice and tight. We went ahead and 3D printed those out of some PLA and got that guy mocked up. As you can see, the plastic's not quite stiff enough once you tension a belt on it. So after going through several renditions to get it dialed in the way we wanted, today it's time to finally finish that guy up and make those guys out of some aluminum. I believe that's how you guys say it over across the pond. Aluminum for us Americans. <laughs> So here is our little concept. We have two plates that sandwich the pump with a spacer for some added stability. We countersink some bolts in the back and three bolts through the front with an idler pulley integrated right in. And that idler pulley keeps the belt running away from the steering gear, giving us loads of clearance. So all blown apart here is our power steering mount. It is a nice, clean, tight fitting setup, which in my opinion will keep the front of this LS3 visually appealing. We have a three eighths thick piece here, quarter inch thick piece here, spacer, and the spacer that fits inside the idler pulley. So now we just need to make these out of aluminum and in the little Land Rover shop, we have our size appropriate machine shop. We got our metal lathe little mill. But the neat thing about the internet is we've had a company following along with the LS3 Defender build and they reached out to us here at the Lost Cause Ranch and offered to help us out with this guy. And that brings us to today's video sponsor, Fictive. But more on them and how they're helping us with this part in just a few minutes. First, we're gonna go ahead and use our little mini machine shop and knock these three pieces out. We went ahead and grabbed ourselves a chunk of quarter inch aluminum sheet or plate. To be honest, not exactly sure at what thickness it changes over from sheet to plate. So we have quarter inch sheet plate. Then we went ahead and grabbed some aluminum bar stock. Let's make those into something useful. So 
we got our little pulley spacer roughed out. Now we're gonna make the bracket spacer. And we are going to get super technical on our drill bit depth for the hole. Sharpie mark. We just need to go that far in. <laughs> So we have our little Creality Ender 3D printer, and with several revisions, we went ahead and prototyped our power steering bracket, part of which is right here. So while we have a bunch of neat tools here in the shop, including the CNC laser, the mill, the lathe, brake, bandsaw, and that 3D printer to help prototype parts, we only have 1,440 square feet, too many Land Rovers, and not enough money to house a CNC mill. But that is where Fictive comes into play. We got this box today. I even went ahead and blacked out my address this time. Been known not to do that in the past. You just saw us make the other half of our power steering bracket here in house. And it turned out pretty nice if you ask me. But sometimes around here we have a part that is kind of beyond my current manual machining capabilities. And the way my bank account works, you see I got a checkings and a savings, and I got a transfer from, but anyways, I don't have enough money for a CNC mill. But with Fictive, that changes. With the combination of that $250 3D printer I have and Fictive, I have a CNC machine shop at my fingertips. As you guys know, I'm not much on sponsors for the videos, but this actually fit in line with what we do around here. So I figured I'd give it a shot and see how they could help us make better Land Rovers as we go on in the future. So since we drew this up, we already had our CAD file that was necessary. All I had to do was log on to Fictive, upload the file, pick out what material I wanted, then it instantly quoted me several different options to get our part custom machined with half being directly from the US and half being overseas manufacturers with different time frames faster cost more money slower a little less so we went ahead and selected one of those options and let fictive do the work and once it was finished and it went through the internal quality control they uploaded pictures directly onto the website that we could take a peek at before the part was even shipped and here is our custom piece. I'd say that's pretty spot on. So I guess if this ends up being wrong, there's only Joe to blame. As you guys know, I've never been wrong before. But there is the final piece. We need to get our front drive all sorted out. That guy looks pretty freaking schnazzy. I think those guys, another freaking one. I think those guys turned out pretty nice. Got our back plate made up. We went ahead and ditched the hole that was in the 3D printed part. That hole was there to shorten up the print time. I mean, this guy only took like five hours to print. Uh, good thing it just does it on its own. We don't have to watch it because that would have been boring. But we got our holes countersunk on both sides. We got our one that we added in the correct spot looking a little better. Went ahead and made up our spacer. That was this guy. That slides right into our pulley and is a nice tight fit. And then we have the bracket spacer that we busted out on the lathe there. I freaking love playing machine shop. So we're gonna start off by getting our back plate mounted up to the cylinder head. There is a little bit of an order of operations on the assembly. This is the instructions for future Joe. We first need to mount the power steering pump to the back bracket, preferably in the correct orientation with the reservoir pointing up. And that guy uses the two countersunk holes in the back. These guys needed to be countersunk and flush with the bracket because that sits flat against the front of the cylinder head here, so no protrusions allowed. They fit. We did something right. Good factory style fitment right into our hole. Now we can bolt our front bracket on to the front of the power steering pump. 
That's three bolts right through the pulley. And then our final piece is that aluminum spacer. That guy adds some additional support to the bottom of the bracket. You guys will have to let me know what you think, but I think that ended up pretty nice. And with the aluminum, much stiffer, but that thing looks proper. The drive setup is super tight to the engine on both sides. Everything is sucked in as close as possible. We have the car intake manifold, which is low and everything sits beneath that. Which was my main goal going into this guy. We wanted everything nice, tucked, neat, and tidy in the engine bay. Let's throw the belt on, see if everything lines up. Everything looks nice and true right along there. We're not pulling away from the cylinder head anymore. The aluminum is much stronger than this chunk of plastic. So our big dilemma on our power steering pump was we have a Corvette crank pulley. The truck style pulley is like two or three inches further out, which would leave plenty of room to stick the power steering pump up top. But being we have a very low profile front drive, there was nothing I could find off the shelf that had the ability to have the power steering pump in this location while being back far enough to meet up with the rest of the belt drive. Who would have thought? But now that we got everything fitted up, we will probably have to shrink the belt size down just a touch. We're almost maxing out the tensioner there. But we also got the correct length belt on there. That guy tensions correctly now, but that is an easy enough thing to tackle. Once we pull the LS3 out, we'll probably powder coat these brackets just so they all match. Or I might even just sandblast them all so we match the texture of the factory cast aluminum. That might actually be the ticket. What do you guys think? I was thinking either like a satin black or that, but I might do, I think the sandblast thing might be the way to go. But I am happy to have the front drive sorted out. I think we need to throw the fenders on and the front end on one more time, make a couple brackets for the wiring harness and a few other small odds and ends, finalize the dash. I think we can blow this guy apart and use that gantry crane we built to get the body off this guy and get the chassis all finished out. We got the steering sorted out. We have the front drive sorted out. Exciting times. With that being said, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you subscribing. And you guys know I'm not big on sponsors, but I'd like to thank Fictive for reaching out and helping us out on the project. The stuff they do seems to fall in line with what we can use here at the ranch. When there's something outside of our capabilities, we do like to try and do as much as we can here, but we just can't do everything. So with our little 3D printer and Fictive, we kind of have like a little prototype CNC machine shop at our fingertips. I think that's going to be mighty useful in the future. And I believe they even do injection molding. That may be a fun one to play with. But if you could use Fictive's machining services, I'll put a link down below and just use code LCRANCH for a discount. That's L Cranch. Or I think they meant LC Ranch, like Lost Cause Ranch. But no, L Cranch will get you a discount. I freaking love this thing. We'll catch you guys on the next one. And don't worry, guys, it's still a freaking disaster in here. But we're getting closer on the insulation. Doing the tall walls now.